Hello, it's me again, and now we're here at Worksheet 4, Video 2, with one of your favorite types of problems, these uh, just monst monstrous static dynamic method selection lookup problems. Uh, you've probably seen a, quite a few of these types of problems already. They're kind of a staple of the early portion of this class, and they're kind of a pain. Um, so I will go through these and hopefully explain them in some way that makes some sense to you. This is the kind of thing that you probably just need to do as many problems as you possibly can over and over until you can get most of them right. There's a lot of subtleties here. There's a lot of weird edge cases and rules. Um, so yeah, do as many of these as you possibly can, but let's go through this one together and hopefully it makes some sense. Okay, so to explain the problem a little bit, this is your classic type of problem where we're gonna give you a few classes that we're gonna give you some lines to run and we're, telling, we're asking you to tell us what is going to print after every line that we are running. Notice here that there are no fields, there are no variables anywhere within the actual classes. All we care about is inheritance and polymorphism. Okay, first thing to do is let's look at the class structure. So we have class A, we have B which extends A, we have C which extends A, and we have a class D. So we have four classes here, and they look basically like this. Right, B and C both extend A. Note that C does not extend B, it doesn't work like that. It's not ABC, it is A and then BC are both uh, children. And then D is out on its own. D doesn't really matter here. It basically just holds the main method. This is the main thing to keep in mind. So when we talk about the hierarchy of different classes, A is the parent of both B and C. B and C are what we might call sibling classes, um, but they're not really related to each other. They're only related through A. Um, and that's basically what we're going to be doing here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is let's look at the main method. The first thing I see is that we have, what, seven lines here where we're basically just instantiating variables of different types. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep track of all of these types. I'm going to keep track of the static type and the dynamic type of all of these variables um, just to make sure that everything is all good and PG. So first thing to notice, when you are instantiating uh, variables of different types, right, where the type that's instantiated is different than the actual dynamic type than the actual type you're instantiating is basically to ask yourself whether it's legal or not. So remember, whenever we instantiate a new object, the static type, which is the type on the left, has to be at or above the level of the dynamic type, which is the type that is on the right, right? So in other words, this first one is gonna be fine to compile because we are saying something that is an A is actually dynamically a B and B, is lower than A. It's in the hierarchy and it is lower than A. We could not say something like, you know, if this over here was B and this was A, that would be big illegal because um, A is above B, right? Another way to think of it is like this, kind of logically. We see here that when we instantiate something statically of type A and dynamically of type B, we can think of it that all, all Bs, um, are like a subtype of A, but not all A's are a super type of B, right? That's why we can't say some, something um, the other way around. So for example, this is a kind of, let's just give it some names. Let's say you had dog and then you had a poodle class, which extends dog. It's okay to say something like dog equals, or dog B equals new poodle. That is fine because a poodle is a type of dog and a poodle will always be a type of dog. It's a subtype, but you couldn't say something like poodle equals new dog, because not all dogs are poodles, right? And when you say statically poodle, you're saying it's a poodle, which it isn't necessarily. It might be, but there could also be, you know, another thing here that's like, I don't know, chihuahua or something, and it wouldn't work. Okay, that's basically what's going on. That's why you can't do that. The moral of the story is make sure it's in the hierarchy, make sure it's in the correct order in the hierarchy. So let's go through all of these variables and see which ones are right and which ones are wrong. So this one I already said is right. So I'm going to keep track of this. We're creating an object E, and I'm just going to keep track of its static and dynamic types. So its static type is A, and its dynamic type is B. I just want to keep track of it this way. This is not a super formal box and pointer diagram because, again, there are no variables here to keep track of. We really only care about the types of the objects. Okay, that's the first one. That's fine. The next one is we have something that is F. It is statically type A. It is dynamically type C. Is that fine? Well, it is fine, right? Because A is a parent of C, right? So the static type is higher than the dynamic type. 
all good there. Now let's do the next one, G. G is statically a B. It is dynamically an A. So this is a problem, right? Because we're trying to say that the stack type is lower than the dynamic type. This is that same problem. This is like trying to say new or a poodle P equals new dog. Not all dogs are necessarily poodle, poodles. In this case, we're trying to say B is dynamically an A. Um, not all A's are necessarily going to be B's, but all B's are going to be A's or some types of them. So we can't do this. This uh, here is illegal. It will not compile. So right here, we're going to get, I'm just going to write CE for compile time error. We're also going to pretend that this line was never run because we do want to run the rest of the lines. Obviously, if you had the single line in your code, you try to execute it, it wouldn't even compile, but we're just going to ignore it for now. Okay, next one is H. H is going to be statically a B. It's going to be dynamically a C. Is this okay? And the answer is it is not okay. Because look, B and C, they're not related, right? B is not a parent of C and C is not a parent of B. Even though they both descend from A, they're not in the same hierarchy because you can't go strictly up or down from B and get to C and vice versa. So this is something that is not going to compile. This is also an error. Whoops. This is a compile error, but keep in mind it is a compile error for a different reason than the previous one was, right? The previous one was a compile error because we were violating the hierarchy. We were putting um, the static type to be lower than the dynamic type. This one is because the two things we were comparing aren't even in the same hierarchy. So same end result, compile error, different reason for it happening. Okay, next one, C i equals C new a. So now we're gonna start getting into casting. So let's take a, a quick second to say what casting is. Casting basically overrides the uh, static type of an object for that line only, right? Basically, what you're doing is you're telling the compiler to trust you and trust that the thing you're casting is actually of that type. It will compile and then we'll run a different way. Okay. So for example, if you were to cast this object E to type B, what you would do is you would temporarily for that line only override the static type and pretend it's B. We're gonna see, I believe an example of that later. That's basically what's going on here. Um, but when you're instantiating a variable like this, it's a little bit different. So basically what this is saying is this A, when you say new A, it's gonna return something of type A, right? Because that's what the constructor does. It returns something of that type. However, instead of treating it as something of type A, the compiler is going to treat it as something of type C, right? So the first thing we're going to ask about a cast, first thing about a cast is you have to cast to something that is in the hierarchy, right? So you can't cast something that's type C to type B because they're not in the same hierarchy, but you could cast something that's type A to type B, you could cast something that's type B to type A, et cetera, right? If that violates the hierarchy, that's going to be a problem still, but it's going to be a problem in runtime because casting only happens at compile time. Okay. Um, so basically, what are we doing here? We're creating an object i. It's going to have a static type. It's going to have a dynamic type. So the static type is just going to be c. So we just do it here. The dynamic type is going to be a. However, at compile time, it's going to treat it as if it is a c, right? It's basically going to return this a object and then cast it as a C. So the question is, can we do that, right? Is this fine? So C is a subtype of A, so it is fine, right? We can cast something of type A to a C because it's in the hierarchy. So this line is going to compile just fine, right? The problem comes at runtime though. So at compile time, right, the compiler is going to say, okay, this thing is statically, it's type C, and it's going to think that this thing is also of type C because we cast it to be type C, right? We're telling the compiler it's type C. However, these casts only last for one line. So once we compile, right, they only last for compile time. Once we compile, it's going to turn out, well, this thing is actually statically C and it's dynamically A, which is not legal again, right? Because the static type has to be higher than the dynamic type. It is not here. So this is not going to run. It will compile, but it won't run. So we are going to get a runtime error. Again, why is this a problem? It is a problem because this line compiles, because you're basically saying C equals new C, because we're casting it to be a C. The reality is, though, it's an A, which you can't do. OK, that is also a runtime error. 
not on a good streak. Three errors in a row right here. Let's see the next one. The next one is going to be J. Again, static dynamic type. J, static type is B. OK, and dynamic type is going to be C. But again, we're casting this thing to be an A. OK, so can we do this? So we have something of type C, and we're casting it to be an A. Is that OK? So we have, um, we are returning a C. We are casting it to be type A. That's OK. So this cast is fine. However, there's another problem. Notice now that the compiler thinks this thing is an A. So you're basically saying this thing is going to be B, and it's going to be bound to something that is type A, right? Dynamically, it's going to be type A is what it thinks. But that's not OK, right? Because statically, B is below A. So this is not going to compile. This, or yeah, this will not compile. This is a really interesting one, too, because saying like something of type B equals new C is totally fine, right? It should compile. The problem is we told the compiler this thing's an A when it's actually not, and that messed it up. So here's an instance of code that should compile, but you put the cast in, and then it doesn't work, actually. OK, the last one of these compiling type questions. Oh, and let me erase this, because this didn't compile. The final one, OK, four errors in a row. Let's see what happens here. This is going to be K. Static dynamic type. So the static type of K is B. And the dynamic type of K is what? Um, so basically, we are going to bind it to be um, E. We're going to bind it to be E. And we're going to basically override the static type of E to be B, because that's what we're doing when we do this cast. We are telling the compiler that E, even though it's statically an A, it looks like an A, is actually a B. And in this case, it is, right? It is actually dynamically a B. So whoops, this cast basically makes sense. This cast compiles all fine. And we are going to end up with something like this, where uh, B is both statically a uh, B and dynamically a B. Why is it dynamically a B? Because E is dynamically a B, and it's just binding it to E. Another thing to keep in mind is if we were drawing a proper box and pointer diagram, this would be like the K is just pointing to the E, the same object that the E is pointing to. I'm not doing it that way because, again, the variables don't matter here. All we really care, are, care about are the types. And notice that even though K and E are actually pointing at the same object in this case, K is statically B and E is statically type A. So the variables themselves are actually different types, even though they're pointing at the same time. OK. Yes, so this line it just runs. It's all fine. So we have these lines with checks run with no, with no output. They run just fine. And the lines with errors run with errors, or do not run because of errors. OK, that's all the setup for this problem. And we end up with three variables here that we're actually going to do the rest of the problem on. OK, first thing we're going to do is we're going to going to do f dot x. So now that we've actually instantiated our variables, remember, how do we determine which of these methods we're going to run? Well, it's a two-stage process. First thing we're going to do is we're going to look for the method here, right, in the static type of f, which is a, right? If we find it, if we don't find it as a compiler, if we do find it, then we're going to transition to runtime where we look up in the dynamic type of f, um, and we're going to run the first one we find that matches that signature we found at the end of the first step. So again, this is a little complicated. We have guides on the website if you aren't familiar with this. But the basic summary of what's going on is look up in the, stat in the static type for the method. If you find it, run, it, run the first method that matches that signature in the dynamic type. Let's do a couple examples. OK, so f dot x. So what we were doing is we were taking the object f, and we were calling um, the x method with no arguments. One thing people often overlook in this is that the arguments can make a difference. The arguments of the method you're running can make a difference as to what method you run. So don't try to, so try to not say, like, we're looking for the method x in f. We're looking for the method x that takes no arguments in f specifically. OK, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the um, static type of f. The static type of f is a. So we're going to look up in this a class for um, a method x that takes no arguments. And we're going to find it. It's right here, right? Public void x, no arguments. 
we're not going to run anything yet. This is the end of compile time, because remember, that's what we do. We look up in the static type for the method. Once we find the method, we basically memorize that signature, right? That's why I've circled it. So now in runtime, <clears throat> we're going to go to not the static type, but the dynamic type of F, which is C, and we're going to look for this exact method signature. We are not looking for this one anymore. We're not looking for F that takes no arguments. We're looking specifically for this one. Um, so we're going to look up in C for a method X that takes no arguments. It's right here. Notice these signatures match exactly. So this is the one we're going to run. We're going to print C X like that. Right. Notice that we found not the method itself that we're going to run when we were in compile time. We found the signature of the method we're going to run. And once we find a method with that same signature in the dynamic type, that's the one we actually run. Okay. Let's do the next one. Okay. E uh, dot X. Okay. Same process here. So first we're going to look up in the static type of E, which is A, for a method called X that takes no arguments. We're going to find it. It's right here. It's the same one we found earlier. That's the end of compile time now that we found the method. In, uh, so then we're going to switch to runtime. We're going to look up in the dynamic type of E, which is B. So we're going to look in this class here. We're going to be looking for a method called X that takes no arguments. And there is not one, right? It doesn't exist. So are we going to give up? No, we're going to look up to the parent class right, for that method. In this case, the parent class is A, which is where we found the method in the first place. So we're looking for a method X that takes no arguments. Well, we're going to find it. It's the exact same one. And we're going to run this one. So this one is going to run A X. Whoops. Ah, ah, OK. OK. Great, the next one, e dot y with no arguments. Okay, so same thing. We're going to look up into the static type, uh, which is a, for a method y that takes no arguments. So notice here that the method, there is a method called y in a, right? However, this is not what we're looking for because remember, we're looking for one that takes no arguments. So this does not count, we don't find it. We're gonna to try to look up to the parent class, but we're in A already, so there is no parent class, which means that this method just doesn't exist. So this is going to be a compile time error. So remember, this is an example of where the arguments you use in the function actually determine, in this case, whether or not you are able to run a function, but also if there were two different functions called Y, one took this argument and one didn't, for example, this one here and here, we would only be able to take the one that takes the argument. Another interesting note about this particular problem is in project one, when many of you were testing uh, your linked list deck, you were trying to write tests for get recursive. And you may have noticed that if you tried to say like LLD or whatever your variable was called dot get recursive, for some reason, IntelliJ did not recognize the get recursive method. The reason that was happening is because if you look at the top of your file, you will see that the linked list deck that you were testing on was instantiated as type deck and of a, of a new linked list deck. So it was statically deck, it was dynamically linked list deck. So what happened is if you try to look up get recursive, it's gonna look up to the static type, which is, de which is deck, and it's gonna look for a method called get recursive. Get recursive is not a method in deck, it's a method that is only in linked list deck. So it's not gonna find it, uh, and it's gonna try to go up to the parent, there's no parent of the deck class, and it's just gonna say compile that error, this method doesn't exist. This method, this right here is exactly the same thing. So if you ran into that issue in project one, that's why it was happening um, because you were trying to call a method from linked list tech, but it didn't exist in the static type. Anyway, I just think that's interesting. Okay, this next one is gonna be the same thing as the previous one, except we are going to first cast B or E to B of type B before calling this. So remember, what does a cast do? A cast temporarily overrides the static type so we're going to treat E as if it's statically a B, right? So what we're going to do is now we're going to look up in the static type, which is B, for a method called Y that takes no arguments, and we're going to find it right here, right? Notice again, there are two Ys, but only one of them takes no arguments, so we're going to take the one that takes no arguments. Okay, we're going to memorize this method signature. 
And then at runtime, we're going to go to the dynamic type, which is also B. We're going to look for this method Y that takes no arguments. We're going to find the very same one, and we're going to run this one. So this is going to run BY. Again, this is also probably what you kind of, um, this is what you should have done <laughs> in, uh, in project one. If you notice you weren't able to run this get recursive method is cast the deck to a linked list deck. Don't worry if you didn't know how to do that at the time, but that's just a note, right? These two functions are trying to do the same thing. This one cannot do it because it is statically type A. So we cast it to be type B so they can. Okay, uh, next line, E equals Y dot E. So again, the arguments matter here. So E, we're going to look up in the SAG type of B, which is A. Notice it's not B because we only override the SAG type for the uh, duration of the cast, which is just this one line. So E is, being, is back to being treated as type A. So we look up in the static type, which is A, for a method Y that takes E. E is what? It is statically type A. So in other words, what we're really looking for is we're looking for a method Y that takes an A. Right, something of type A. Because remember, we're in compile time right now, which means we're looking at the static types. And we're going to find it right here. Nope. The pencil is being a little weird. All better. Um, so we're going to find it right here. Right. So this is another bit of a nuance here. But um, if, for example, we had two Y methods, let's say we had another public void Y, but it took like a, a B called Z, right? Imagine we just had two methods up here. We would still run this one. Why? Because we are going to the stack type of E, which is A, and we are looking for an, a function called Y that takes whatever the static type of E is, which is A still, that takes an A. Even though B is dynamically B, statically it's an A, and we're in compile time. So. If we had another method called public void y that took a b, z, you would still take this one. Uh, that's something that I think is important that is not addressed in this particular question, but that's a great way to, to trick students. It's a kind of common thing to look out for. Anyways, end of compile time, we found this method that circled. So now we go to runtime. What is the dynamic type of um, e? It is b. So you look up in b for um, a method y that takes an a. We have a method y here, but it takes a b. Doesn't matter that dynamically e is a b now. We are looking specifically for this method. We're looking for one that specifically tapes a type a, right? We want to match this signature exactly. So we're going to skip over this one and we're going to go up into the superclass into a and we're going to run this method. So this is going to be a y. That is perhaps the most important question on here. Lots of nuance in that. Um, but anyways, let's go on to the next one. OK, E dot Y of F. So we're going up to the static type of E, which is A. We are going to look for a method Y that takes something of F's static type, which is A. This is, so this is going to be this method, same method as we found before, method Y that takes an A because F is of type A. Then in um, runtime, we are going to go to the dynamic type of E, which is B. We're going to look for something of type A because we're going to look for, you know, a Y that takes something of type A. We're not going to find it. So we're going to go up to the parent class. We're going to run this method again. We're going to run A. Notice that this was the exact same process we did with the previous one, right? Why was it the exact same process? Because in the previous one, we were passing in E, right? And E has static type A. And in this that last one we just did, we were passing in F, which also has static type A. Doesn't matter, the dynamic types are different. The static types are the same, so we ended up finding and running the same method. Um, so that is this entire problem. I hope this is useful. Again, these are a classic type of confusing problem in this class. So don't feel bad if some of these are going to take a little longer for you to understand.